Hi guys, welcome back to Live Ideas Studio, the place where we explore all things about painting. Today we are diving into a topic that's crucial for every landscape artist, tonal values. I'm going to talk about value and how it appears in landscape painting and how you can create form and depth. I'll also share with you what the two main sources of light are in landscape and how they affect your painting. I believe that understanding the, the core principles and fundamentals is the first step to get better at painting. So sit tight and let's get started. All right, firstly, let's talk about how value happens. Some parts of this tutorial are an excerpt from my online course, Value and Value Relationships in Landscape. Values about the lightness and darkness of a color shape within a drawing or a painting. It's also called tone or shade. Let's understand how value happens. Color is a phenomenon of light, right? Without light, there is no color, no value differentiation. Shapes would appear to be flat and formless. Light makes an object gain form in three-dimensionality. It makes a landscape gain depth in a sense of space. Without the contrast created by value differences, the surfaces and things would look flat. Like in this evening picture, where there is no sunlight, just the moonlight coming from behind the trees. But not enough to reactivate our perception of the actual colors of the elements that are there. So all we see a silhouette, black, flat shapes like the birds and the trees. So that means that light affects the way we see colors, right? Round objects like these rocks, for instance, look rounded because there is light shining on them, which changes the actual color into different shades from light to dark. A rounded rock like this will appear lighter as its surface gets closer to the light source and darker wind that moves away from it. In landscape painting, understanding tonal values is like unlocking the secrets of creating depth in form in your artwork. In landscape, the objects are usually affected by two sources of light, the sun and the sky. That makes reading values on this subject different from others. The sunshine produces a warm light, while the sky a cool light as it reflects its color on a surface. The light created by the sun is a direct light, therefore is stronger than the one produced by the sky. So the skylight reflects its color onto surfaces more gently and it's mostly seen in shadow areas. It usually creates a temperature change on a surface, while the sunlight creates a value and a temperature shift in a color shape. To sum up this point, the, the sun is our primary light source, and it casts direct light on an object, creating highlights and shadows. The, the sky, acting as a secondary light source, provides a more diffused ambient light, softening the shadows and filling in the darker areas. Knowing how these two sources of light work together is very crucial. The interplay between direct sunlight and ambient light is what gives your landscape that realistic and three-dimensional feel. It's like nature's own light show, and us as artists, we get to capture and replicate that magic in our canvas. But let's get back to value. In this example, we can create a convincing sense of form on the rocks by using only three values to paint them. They are dark for the areas where the rocks meet each other, mid-dark for the shadow side of the rocks, and mid-light for the lightest side of them. Then we would also need another value for the background, which seems to be the lightest in relation to the values seen on the rocks. But value in isolation is nothing. My painting won't work if I get three values right and one wrong, for example. That one wrong will make the others look out of place. So that means that value can never be judged in isolation, but in the context of other values. That's called value relationships. 
Imagine you are painting a rolling hill. The part directly hit by sunlight will be lighter, while the, the areas in shadow will be darker. But here's the trick. Maintaining a balance in a relationship between those values is what brings your landscape to life. I'm always comparing value masses when I'm painting. In this scene, for example, I would be asking myself questions like, how much lighter is the ground in comparison to the trees? Is the ground lighter or darker than the sky? Is the sky darker or lighter than the mountains? How does the light side of these trees here compare to the dark side of them? That's what we call value relationships. It is about how the values within a painting relate to each other. And that's the way by which we can distinguish one shape from another. This value differentiation is caused primarily by light and how that changes the value a color inherits. The value patterns created by these relationships also form an underlying foundation of the composition. But why is this thing about value relationships so important? Well, if the value relationships aren't properly modulated, it will be difficult to get the color to work. That's why many painters usually work out value relationships first when they create it on the painting layer before they dive into colors. The old masters worked with tonal value on the paintings first and they were constantly developing sketches to learn more about the forms of the figures they would be painting. The Italian masters worked with a technique called verdaccio. They mixed a range of greenish grays from dark to light to study values on these subjects before they applied layers of color. The French masters worked with the Griselle, a combination of black and white to mix several tonal values. And the Dutch painters used the Brunel, in which they used earth colors thinned with turps to create different shades. Don't be afraid to experiment with contrasts. A bold difference between light and shadow can add drama and interest to your piece. It's all about finding that sweet spot and letting your values do the talking. As you work on your masterpiece, pay attention to the subtle shifts in tonal values. The, the transition from light to shadow is where the magic happens. It's like a dance between your brush and the canvas, each stroke shaping the landscape and telling its unique story. And there you have it! Some useful tips on tonal values in landscape painting. Remember, understanding how light interacts with your surroundings and mastering value relationships will elevate your artwork to new heights. So go ahead, grab your paints, head outdoors or just paint in the studio and let the beauty of tonal values inspire your next masterpiece. If you'd like to study this in depth, I've got a full course on that called Value and Value Relationships in Landscape. You can find the link to that in the description below this video. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more. You can also follow me on social media. Links are below this video. Next video, I've got a gem for you. John Carlson's Theory of Angles. I'm not sure if you have heard of this, but trust me, this is the key to unlocking a whole new level of depth and beauty in your artwork. This was a game changer for me many years ago. Until next time, keep creating and let your imagination run wild. Happy painting! <laughs>